golfers today let's learn from one of the best players on the planet Justin Rose let's try and gain something from his exaggerated practice swing that I love so much and what it does to feed all the right things in the golf swing he talks a lot of sense he does these actions which are exaggerated which are beautiful which make you move differently and that's the key thing about this let's get stuck into why it's so good so Justin Rose, you know, a modern great golfer is how I describe him, certainly maximizes his potential. One of the things that I love about him is the way he works. And let's just go through some of the facets around this work that I want you to try and encourage into your golf swing. And certainly his practice swings would be a fit for pretty much any golfer, apart from maybe if you want to hit a cut. But you could still do some of these moves and make it into a cut if you needed to. But certainly these moves will help encourage a straight ball flight or a draw ball flight and great dynamics of the body and great ball contact. That's the key things. So what he talks about in his golf swing, Justin Rose, is he says his philosophy or his concept would be from the top of the backswing, he feels like he stays close and lets his arms drop down. And he says he does this so he gets the time of his swing right, but also so he can get his arms and body working in harmony so he doesn't get into a position where he spins out too quickly, gets trapped, gets ahead of the golf ball. He gives himself time to get these arms to deliver the club correctly to the ball. So that is something I've talked about a lot in my videos and I absolutely love the fact that Justin Rose does the same. The second part of what I love about what he does is how he exaggerates the hand position in the downswing. And he also uses a smart ball, which I'll grab one in a minute and demonstrate that. Let's just go through the hand position first and we'll talk about the smart ball in terms of the elbows. What he does basically when he does his downswing, and you'll see from the exaggerated video I'll share with you, from the top of the backswing, he tries to keep his back facing target and he tries to get his hands very, very low. And his hands actually get to a position that are underneath his kneecap, okay? And then from there then, as he goes through the golf ball, it's kind of drag, pull, up and through. Now, all those dynamical, dynamic moves are fantastic. Getting the hands low in the delivery position is something all good golfers do. And doing that with a closed body allows us to get the club on the right path, so an inter-square to in path rather than across the golf ball. It also, from being so low, helps us create some vertical force going down. And then from there, the handle has to work up and round. And he exaggerates that to the extreme. Again, the body's rotating. So we get the body rotating at the right part of the swing through the contact zone which means we can be more, let's call it passive is the word I use a lot, passive with the hands. Essentially, if my body breaks early, my hands overtake. If my body breaks later, the hands overtake later. And we definitely want some hand action. This is not about saying there are no hands in the golf swing. This is very much about saying the hands should release, throw the right part. The part of the swing where the arms and hands are in a straight line is here. If we have a clock face, this is six o'clock. It's somewhere around about that 4.30, five o'clock area. That's the time when everything is pretty much in line or straight. Until then, the right arm would be bent and straightening. So we want basically the hands to be low, the body closed, the body to rotate, and the hands to straighten all through that hitting zone and get into that straight position around about that five o'clock area. So for me, getting these hands low and keeping the body closed is kind of the one huge downswing concept that we should all do and own. It only feeds good things. It only helps to give us crispy strikes, good sequencing, good rotation, good hand action, good ground use. So it does all this from one practice swing. So what I'd like you to do basically is set up to a golf ball. And we're gonna do this in two phases. Go to the top of your swing, hands low, hands through. Use that as your feel for your practice swing, then go ahead and hit a ball and try and similar, you know, get as similar to that as you can. So I definitely felt lower to the ground than normal. And that's all we want. Can it influence what we do normally to get us to use that ground a bit more and get that sequence a bit better? Ideal world, the hands are gonna go down and forward and then push up and through. That is for me the ideal scenario. Let's involve the elbows a little bit now and let's talk about that. So one of the things Justin uses a lot is a smart ball. So the tall striker smart ball, he places that between his arms like so. 
Now what's so good about this is when we're doing this same move, the elbows are pushing together. Now so many golfers, when they try and do this move, oh, this is easy. See how far apart my elbows are now and how close to my body are. And this trail elbow then gets into the position where it points out as opposed to pointing more towards the ball. So we lose the dynamics of being able to control that lag and those wrist angles. The kind of way we want it to move is elbow, hand, club, as opposed to hand, elbow. It's massively different in terms of power and control of that face. So introducing a smart ball, putting it in between our arms, I'm feeling we would do exactly the same moves, squeezing that smart ball, it just makes the arms work so much better. It allows the arms to get more eyewear classes down and in front. So down in front and forward. So the practice swings would be low to the kneecap, then try and feel the hands and arm almost travels forward and up like this, with the body reacting to the rotation caused by that. Now, dynamically, the rotation will probably lead the arms, but so many of us golfers will get the feeling that our arms are more here and the body's more rotated. So the more we can encourage the opposite and get the arms to do their part, the more it's going to encourage the real cool things we want through the ball. When we watch all elite ball strikers, their arms are in sync or maybe as we would feel, forward. And the hands, Pete Cowan talks about this, the hands pushing the hips rather than the hips pulling the hands. That's a great concept for the guys that spin and rotate. So using this ball and having this practice swing gives me, and it'll give you, exactly those feels that we're looking for. Low and forward, up and round. Then we can go ahead and hit a ball with a ball between our arms. And let me tell you, it's not easy, it's challenging. It makes you move differently, it makes your body move differently to normal. It might make you swing a little shorter. It's kind of the idea. If your swing's long, great tool to use to get that arm swing a bit tighter and shorter. A great way of feeling how the body should be working a little harder through that hitting zone. 